Hello, and thank you for joining us for the 8th Annual Dark Sky Festival hosted by Sequoia Parks Conservancy. Whether you follow us on social media or you've come on one of our tours in the park, you have seen the amazing skies that the parks have to offer. But tonight we wanted to change things up and go outside of the park to see what we have in our communities. And so we've come to the Kingsburg Observatory to see what they have to offer. And to show us around the observatory, we have Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Hello, thanks for coming today. Kingsburg Observatory and Astronomical Education Center was started in 1967 by Kingsburg High School Principal Robert Taylor. The dream of the observatory when it was founded was for it to provide a place where students in the area as well as other community members could enhance their knowledge of astronomy. Over the years there have been various events that have been held here star parties, observation of spe special events like comets and conjunctions, uh, the transit of Venus in 2012, and our goal going forward is to continue to have those kinds of events, possibly some regular star parties, as well as other events when uh, special things are happening in the sky. As you can tell, community observatories host exciting opportunities to see deep space objects and they have some pretty amazing equipment. But tonight we're going to focus on what you can observe and discover in your own backyard with tools you might have already lying around your house. Your backyard might be perfect for observing the night sky, but maybe you live in an area where you have many trees overhanging, or maybe you have a building next door that's blocking half of the sky of your view, or maybe you live in an area with lots of street lights and in a resulting light dome that makes it very hard to see deep space objects and many of the constellations that we know and love. But not all is lost. Maybe you have friends or neighbors that have an open sky in their yard that you can go and enjoy that opportunity with them. Or maybe you have a local city or state or national park near you that you can go out and observe the unimpeded night sky. Who knows, maybe you'll discover your dark in a brand new park. Once you know where you're going to sit, you need to know what you're looking at. And there are lots of great options. There are physical copies of the stars called planispheres, or there are app-based products like Stellarium, Star Guide, and Starfinder, which not only help you know what you're looking at and give you lots of great information, but if you connect your GPS, you can actually point the app at what you're looking at and it will tell you whether you're looking at a galaxy or a planet or something else that's up in the sky. There are many objects in our night sky other than just stars, many of which we can see with our bare eyes. For instance, we have the moon and the planets and even the Andromeda Galaxy. We can also use instruments such as the telescopes behind me or binoculars, which will allow us to discover the night sky in different ways. Now that we got our spot, our star app, and our binoculars, we're ready to discover some really cool objects up in the night sky. Our first object is known as Albirio and resides in the head of the swan, Cygnus. These two stars are so far away that they look as if they are one with our bare eyes. However, when we get a closer look with the binoculars, we start to see the hotter blue star and the cooler orange star as separate points. That's right. Stars have different temperatures based on how big they are and how quickly they're burning their fuel, which is mostly hydrogen. Just like with the flame of a candle, the blue flame is hotter than the orange flame. Even though we can see the next object has more than one star with our bare eyes, it took someone looking a little deeper to discover exactly what it is. 
We're going to look next to the knee of Pegasus to find the galaxy called Andromeda. With our bare eyes, we can see a slight smudge of stars. What do you discover when you look closer at that smudge through your binoculars? Over the next four billion years, this shape will get easier and easier to see with our bare eyes as we sit in our backyards. One day, it might even get close enough to our solar system that we could see it in our sky during the daytime. But for now, we can simply enjoy it through a telescope and imagine what it would be like to have that shape rivaling the sun in our sky. As we continue this journey of discovery, let's turn our gaze back into our own galaxy and look at some planets. Many ancient cultures looked up and saw these lights that do not follow the normal path of the stars. Some revered them as gods, some called them wanderers, and some told stories of their adventures. The planet we are looking at now is named after the Greco-Roman god Zeus, or Jupiter. If we look with binoculars, we can see some or all of Jupiter's four major moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. I propose a challenge. Look at Jupiter through a pair of binoculars for three or four nights in a row. If you do, you'll uncover something very cool about these moons. If we look up on a clear night with a telescope, we can sometimes see the 200-year-old red anticyclone that tears across the planet's southern hemisphere. This planet is made of all the material that makes up stars. However, this planet does not have enough of it. Despite being the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter is about 1 1,047th of the mass of our sun, or 1 70th of the mass of the smallest known star. Don't worry, it is not likely that a gas cloud with 69 Jupiters worth of hydrogen will enter our solar system and give us a second solar mass. The second largest planet in our solar system is also visible tonight. In fact, it is very close visually to Jupiter right now. This planet is also a gas giant, so it has a lot of hydrogen just like Jupiter. However, it is much smaller, about one third the size of Jupiter, or one 3,500th the size of our sun. Depending on the power of your binoculars, Saturn might look like a squashed circle or oval. Our binoculars tonight have the power of 15 magnification, which makes it look like this. When we look through the telescope at Saturn, we discover its true form as the rings start to separate from the body of the planet. While it looks like there is one ring through our telescope, larger telescopes and satellites have revealed more than seven major rings. Each contains thousands to millions of chunks of ice, snow, and rock, ranging in size from a pebble to a car. Thank you for joining the Sequoia Park Conservancy the Central Valley Astronomers, and the Kingsburg Observatory for this year's Dark Sky Festival. Please smash the like button below if you're going to look up at the stars tonight and let us know where your favorite place to observe the night sky is in the comments below. Enjoy discovering your night.